The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples, and we begin at verse 12. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I really enjoy Christian music, and I enjoy the contemporary Christian music even more, and one of my favorite groups is Casting Crowns. And Casting Crowns has many songs that I enjoy, but one of them that I particularly enjoy is called The Voice of Truth. The Voice of Truth. And what this song talks about is how we all face those times in our lives when we may have a challenge ahead of us. Now that challenge may come in the form of something God is calling us to do, a ministry possibly, something where we have to use our time, our abilities, our talents, and we feel incapable. We don't really feel up to the challenge. Or it may be a time of trial in our life. We all go through those times of trial. It could be a divorce, a death, an illness, financial problems, addiction. But we have these challenges and these trials that come into our lives every now and then. And you can be sure that every time we face a time of trial or a challenge, the voice of deceit, the father of lies, Satan himself will begin to whisper in our ear, and sometimes it seems he even works through other people. And he'll come to us saying, you're not up to it. You're not big enough, you're not strong enough, you're not smart enough, you're not educated enough. You know you've tried before and failed what makes you think you can do it this time. And sometimes Satan will even go so far as to say, you know you're alone in this, God doesn't know, God doesn't care. He will even try to convince us that God brought this time of trial into our lives and he has forsaken us, left us, doesn't care, and he will even try at times to tell us it's punishment for something we've done at another time in our life. He is the father of lies. He is the voice of deceit. And he likes nothing more than to whisper in our ear or work through another person to tear away at our faith in God. We all face those times, don't we? They come and go in our lives, but it is a universal truth that at some time or another, we will face a challenge or a trial where the voice of deceit will whisper in our ear. But according to the words of this song from Casting Crowns, the voice of truth tells me a different story. The voice of truth says, do not be afraid. The voice of truth says, this is for my glory. Out of all the voices calling out to me, I will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth. The Bible's full of stories just like this. Just like like this, where trials and challenges came into the lives of people and they chose to listen to the voice of truth. Let's think about Davy the shepherd boy. Before he was King David, Davy the shepherd boy, who came with five smooth stones to take on the Philistine giant Goliath. He listened to the voice of truth, even though the voice of lies was speaking to him through his brothers. His brothers said to him, Who are you 
Who are you to take on the giant? You're not strong enough. You're not trained. You're not a warrior. Who are you to think you can take on this giant? Go back to the fields with your sheep. But Davy the shepherd boy listened to the voice of truth because Davy knew that it wasn't by his own power or might that he would take down the giant, that it was the Lord Almighty who would work through him. And with one, one of his five smooth stones, he brought down the giant. The shepherd boy brought down the giant because he listened to the voice of truth. What about Joseph? Joseph, whose brothers threw him in a well, sold him into slavery, then he's wrongly imprisoned by Pharaoh, and yet rises to the level of second in command of all of Israel, second only to Pharaoh himself, and saves a country from famine. And when his brothers, the same brothers who sold him into slavery, kneel before him in fear because of the power that he has attained, Joseph speaks with the voice of truth as he says to his brothers, what you meant for evil, God used for good. What you meant for evil, God used for good and God gets the glory. Joseph chose to speak the voice of truth. And then there's Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha, whose brother Lazarus is sick and dying, and they call for Jesus to come. Come, Jesus, before our brother dies, because they believed that Jesus could save their brother. But Jesus doesn't get there in time. And Lazarus dies and has been in the tomb three days, all hope seemingly gone. Jesus arrives. And Jesus speaks a voice of truth as he says, Lazarus will live again. This is for God's glory. And he prays to the Heavenly Father. And he says, I know that you hear this prayer, but I pray for those who are here today. And he prays for Lazarus to be resurrected. And he calls Lazarus out of the tomb. And Lazarus throws off the grave clothes and walks out. God receives the glory. Jesus speaks with a voice of truth. In the gospel lesson for today, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he knows that they cannot yet comprehend what he's telling them. Three times Jesus predicts his death. But he knows that even yet his disciples are not capable of comprehending what the future is going to be. He knows that as long as he is with them in the flesh, they cannot understand that one day he will no longer be with them in the flesh and they will have to carry on his ministry by themselves. And Jesus knows that there is the danger they will be paralyzed in their fear. The persecution is going to come. The times of trial will come. The challenges will come. And Jesus knows that when he's not with them any longer, in the flesh, day in, day out, there is the danger they will be paralyzed in their fear and the call on their lives to carry on his ministry will stop. So he tells them, I am going to send the Holy Spirit to you. The Holy Spirit is the power of God that lives in the heart of every believer. The Holy Spirit will live in the hearts of the disciples. The Holy Spirit will encourage, empower, equip, lead, guide, love, comfort, and speak a word of truth to them. The Holy Spirit will come. And when they face their days of trial and challenges, it is the Holy Spirit who will guide them, lead them, and speak a word of truth to them when the world is filled with so many lies. 
The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. This is Holy Trinity Sunday. It's the day we remember God the Father who is the Creator, God the Son who is the Redeemer, and God the Holy Spirit who is the power of God living in every believer. Power living in every believer to carry out any thing God calls us to do and to face any challenge or trial because we will know the truth. It lives in us. This is good news for you and for me. This is good news when we face our trials and our challenges and the world speaks a word of deceit to us and lies and tells us we're not strong enough, good enough, smart enough, capable enough. The word of truth speaks to us because the Holy Spirit lives in us. It tells us a different story. It tells us don't be afraid. This is for God's glory. But it's a choice. It's always a choice. It's a choice whether we listen to those loud voices of deceit and lies that come from every direction or whether we get quiet and we spend some time in prayer seeking the voice of truth because it speaks quietly. It is the still small voice that speaks quietly. We aid the Holy Spirit, the voice of truth, when daily we are sowing that word into our hearts. Be in the word. Be in the Bible every day, sowing it into our hearts. I know it seems like we read the word and we can't remember it and we wonder what good it is. It's in there. We've sown it into our hearts and it is in those times of trial, it is when we face those challenges that the Holy Spirit brings the word to our minds. Be in the word every day, sow it into our hearts and then Spend that time in prayer. Be quiet. Speak to the Lord and then listen for the voice of truth to speak. It's a choice. It's always a choice what voice we listen to. And this is the challenge for the church. Sow the word into our hearts. Take the time to be quiet and be in prayer, and listen for the voice. There's a deeper truth going on here as well. A deeper spiritual truth. God loves us. God loves us. He loves you. And he wants you to be happy and to have joy and peace in your lives. He wants you to be comfortable. But our joy, our comfort, is not his greatest purpose. Our daily comfort and joy is not God's greatest purpose. He has a greater purpose, and that is that every man and every woman of every nation hears the good news and receives Jesus and is saved. That is his greater purpose. And if he can use the trials of our lives, he does not cause, hear this, God does not cause our suffering and pain, but if he can use our trials to bring others to Christ and God receives the glory, he will do so. But he's with us in the trials. He walks through the trials with us. He never leaves us, never forsakes us. He walks through the trial with us, providing, guiding, loving, comforting. And on the other side of that time of trial, when people have seen us go through a trial, maintaining our peace, our hope, our joy, our faith, and coming out on the other side, whole, with our faith intact, that's a testimony. That's a testimony to what God can do. And God gets the glory. Claim that truth. Claim that truth for your own. 
and know that the next time that trial or that challenge comes into your life that you are not going through it alone. God did not cause it, but he is in it with you, walking with you, leading, guiding, equipping, empowering, loving, and comforting, and you will come out the other side. That's the challenge for the church today. Here's the good news. We're going to face trials and challenges in our lives. That's going to happen. Count on it. And the world will tell us all kinds of lies and we'll hear the voice of deceit. But the voice of truth tells us a different story. The voice of truth says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. This is for God's glory. Now, will we choose to listen and believe the voice of truth? Please rise and join together for the hymn of the day. It's printed in your bulletin. <laughs>